This right here was the original plan for today's video, simply because he's an awesome figure. He's got fantastic paint, a fantastic alt mode, an awesome transformation, and greatly replicates the on-screen model. But I've been shuffling around this plan for the past month or so, constantly changing who's going to be in, who's not going to be in. And this was a last minute change. I quite literally changed my mind on the day of filming. In fact, it was probably about half an hour ago that I changed it. But I am still going to discuss a Cybertron toy. Sort of. This right here is Jetfire. Although, he's not really. He's actually Thundercracker that has been retooled into Jetfire for the 2006 Classics line. It's somewhat odd though, because I got my start in the Transformers franchise during the 2007 movie, but he didn't come until a lot later, and he was only in Woolworths, I remember, so he may have not been released fully, or he may have been released properly, but then he didn't sell well, and he ended up in the bargain bins at supermarkets. I'll never truly know for sure, and this isn't my original copy, I've lost mine. I sourced it from elsewhere, and I'm pretty happy I did for the nostalgia factor. But, does the toy hold up? We'll have to see. Now, of course, Jet 5 here is a redeco of Cybertron Thundercracker, and the weird thing they did with Cybertron Thundercracker is, even though they already had a Starscream mold, they decided to go for a completely different character type that was more akin to the G1 styling for him. And when you see what Starscream looks like, you kinda wish they went with the Starscream instead. It's incredibly disappointing because this design is friggin' awesome! And then you got this dumpy thing, it's not really that good. But enough of that, is Thundercracker good on his own? Sorry, is Jetfire good on his own? I'm sorry, this doesn't really look like Jetfire, it's just a really cheap repaint they had for the Classics line, and it's very disappointing, because this alt mode just isn't that good. I like the paint that they've used, these red apps here and on the back are pretty nice, but this cockpit is just too big, and then you turn it over, and that is some hefty undercarriage. And yes, I'm well aware that several Legend Seekers are going to look this bad, but this takes the cake, especially with this gun assembly here. They really didn't have to do that. See, that's the problem with trying to literally translate the larger toys into smaller versions. That gun assembly was a cyber key accessory, and they really wanted to recreate that in a smaller form. And because of that, the toy really suffers for it. If you put it on a shelf with other toys though, it doesn't look too bad. So it's not the worst alt mode I've ever seen, but it is still pretty disappointing. Especially when compared to some of the other toys from the line, which look way better. And of course, for a size comparison, we'll bring in crumbs. Honestly, if you have to choose which is the better alt mode, this shitty knockoff is actually better than this. Sure, it's got really terrible plastic, but there's charm to it. This is just dumpy. And I get that's what the character's going for, or well, the original character anyway. See, Cybertron Thundercracker was somewhat of a hillbilly who was always getting into trouble. But then again, didn't Ransack and Crumple Zone already provide the comedy relief? What was the point of Thundercracker? It was just annoying. It's not really that cool. Transformation is dead simple. It's the same Seeker transformation you've seen a million times over, minus the awesome wing flip. First thing you want to do is get this huge piece of kibble out of the way. Next thing you want to do is untab this from underneath and flip the entire torso up like so. Then you're supposed to open up this flap here and then fold it down. However, it's on a double hinge, so you don't really need to. It's an unnecessary joint and it ends up looking incredibly ugly. And when you make sure that's in place, and this is supposed to peg into place, but it doesn't really. So it's got those two holes there. Ah, there we go. There we are. They actually got into place there. Sometimes it just does not work at all. You bring the feet down, and then you stand him up. And he is an incredibly stupid looking seeker who's been repurposed as Jetfire, but looks nothing like Jetfire. This... Oh, come on. Come on. There we are. Getting him to stand up is a bit annoying with these bloody feet because they're very small and he can be a little back heavy with this. Yes, a Legends figure that's back heavy, that's an oddity. He honestly looks more like Nacelle than actually Jetfire. And I'm really and I'm really sad that we haven't gotten a proper Legends Jetfire at all, like, unless, unless of course you count the Iron Factory version. But even as his own thing, it's just not that good. I like the black paint apps on the missiles and I like that they've added some paint on the legs. And the head's painted pretty nicely, but the sculpting's just bad. It's dumpy, and again, that's the character, but 
not dumpy in a good way. You've got hollowness all over here, static legs. It doesn't even have that much articulation. And this thing is completely unsightly. It's big. You can't take it off without undoing the ball joint and it flops around all over the place. Articulation is pretty piss poor as well. You've got ball joints here and then these ball joints don't even move outwards. They only move up. And that's it. When it comes to looks and articulation, Starscream is just so much better in every single way. The only reason I didn't review him is because I have more nostalgia for this guy and I wanted to cover him early on. But I guess I'll have to wait until next year to cover this guy. Of course, we have to do a size comparison with Crumbs over here. And big shock, he's actually easier to stand than this guy. How is that possible? How? From a distance, the toy looks okay, but when you really get closer to it, it's very shaky. There's a lot of problems with it. The transformation's fine, and the alt mode's pretty good, but this gun assembly's very unsightly, and it just doesn't really feel like Jetfire. It doesn't really feel like a proper Seeker anyway, because it's very oddly proportioned. It's got that goofy Cybertron Thundercracker feel, but not in a good way. It's not goofy, but fun. It's goofy, but a bit sh I'm glad I got him, but for any Legends collectors, I would just pass him and get the Iron Factory version instead. Now, nostalgia is pretty powerful. However, it doesn't always work in every circumstance. But what happens if it's the first toy you've ever gotten? Does nostalgia completely blind you? Or does a toy actually need to be good to grab your attention? We'll find that out tomorrow when we finally move into the movie verse and my debut into Transformers collecting.